این الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والله يجعل المسلمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الكريم وعلى عليه وسلم أجمعين إن الحمد لله نحمده استعينا واستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شوري أنفسنا من سيئة عمله ما يهده له فلا مضل الله وما يضل له فلا حدي الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من ناس واحد وخلقكم من ناس زوجة وبث رجالا كثيرا والنساء وَكَبَ لَا تَسَعْلُونَ بِهِ وَلَا رَحَمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْهُمْ رَجِيبًا يَا يُلْحِنَ عَمْنُ تَقْوَبَوْا وَكُولُوا كَوْنًا سَدِيرًا يُسْلَحَكُمْ وَمَعْلَكُمْ وَيَفْرِرُكُمْ وَمَا يُبْتِ اللَّهُ وَرَسُلُ اللَّهُ وَقَالَ فَاسَتْ فَاوْزًا عَظِيمًا قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن القريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أليف لام مين ذلك كتاب الله ريب لا ريب هدي للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويؤمنون الصلاة ومن ما رزقناهم ينفقون والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبل وبالآخرتهم يقن أولئك لا هدى من ربهم وأولئك هم المغتنين الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لا يخص إلا الذين آمنوا وآمنوا صلاحات وتوسوا بالحق وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الدنيا سجن المؤمن وجنة الكافر إن الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين كل الله لجامع المسلمين بسم الله يا الحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم على رسول الله فإن استقوا هديه كلام الله وخير هدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم واشروا المؤمن متتبعها وكل متتبع بدعة وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة متنعة الحمد لله رب العالمين There were two things that I want to achieve today one is to keep the khutbah short so I'll keep your attention. The second thing is to mention something about this month. This being the first month of the Islamic calendar, the lunar calendar called Muharram. <coughs> what is Muharram? What is, why do we have this name Muharram? It comes from the word Haram because it is forbidden one of the four months in the Islamic calendar, forbidden by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to engage in war. Unless somebody's attacking you, of course you have to defend yourself, but otherwise, no war. According to some of the Shiite that I heard from, they said that they do not fast this, the days that we fast, because they claim that this is the same month and the same day actually when their when uh, the grandson of Prophet Sallallahu was killed in Karbala. All that aside, I wanted to mention that this time of the year though is a special time and it is a very special month. Some people consider this to be only outdone by the month of Ramadan. One of the things about it is that the Prophet Sallallahu when he was in Medina, he found that the, the Jewish there, there were a lot of Jews in Medina in those days, 
He found that they were fasting and one one know what why are why are they fasting on this particular day, which is the tenth of Muhammad. And he was told that the reason they're doing this, this is the day when Musa, Moses, Alexander, peace be upon him, had achieved a, a victory over Pharaoh. Okay? The 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 uh, the big enemy to Islam and Allah in those days. So they wanted to pass that. And according to the translation of Hadith, it said that the Prophet said, we are more entitled to this than even those guys. Because, you know, we believe in all of the Prophets. All the Prophets of Allah, we believe in them, maybe more than some of the Jews or Christians, Satans and so on. So he said, Okay, we'll fast this day, but also another day with it, the day prior. Now, some of the scholars, they said, well, you can either fast the day before or the day after. So if you didn't fast it, it was just a couple days ago, so if you missed it, you missed something really big. But if you can't fast, then you already know about this. Anybody who's not able to fast for whatever reason, or if you're like traveling, something like that, then if you just had the intention, if I could, I would, then remember that the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Inna So if you had the intention to do something, it was a good thing, you wanted to do it, but you couldn't do it, Allah can still give you the reward for it. So that's important. The another thing about the fasting of this month is, imagine that if you just fast these two days, the rewards with the law subhanahu wa ta'ala are so big that, uh, like I said, uh, scholars have said that the only thing that outshines this month and fasting in this month is the month of Ramadan. So that's, that's kind of big. Because if, you, if you get the chance any month, any month, uh, Islamic month, now don't, don't try to use like November, December like that, but the Islamic months you can tell always to look at the moon. And when you see the moon, it's a beautiful, big, round disk with no shade on either side of it. It's <coughs> probably the middle of the month. And if you can fast the day right before that, the day of that, and the day after that, those three days, that's called middle of the month, then, inshallah, Allah can give you the reward for the whole month. It's pretty good. Also, an alternative, is that if somebody can fast those days and then do salah in two particular times in the masjid, you know what happens? Let me tell you this story. Okay. Prophet Sallallahu he told us in a way by telling somebody else and it gets to us. Somebody was, a lady actually, she came to the Prophet Sallallahu she said, do you want to get married? But she wants to marry a real pious, you know, religious guy, a brother who's keeping up with Islam. So she says to Prophet Islam, I want somebody who fasts every day. And he gets up in the, in the night and worshiping Allah all night long. Well, this is ridiculous. I mean, you know, even the most uh, really uh, extreme of the Muslims, I don't think he's going to do that. Not every day, not every night. But this is what she said. So, Prophet Islam recommended somebody to her, and she got married to him. Then she came back, she's complaining to Rasulullah later. She said, Yeah, this guy, you know, he's, he's not fasting every day, he's not staying up every night, worshiping alone. So, Rasulullah he asked, <coughs> Does he fast the three, or uh, in this case, I think he asked about Mondays and Thursdays. I think that was the case. And she says, yeah, Mondays and Thursdays, got it? He said, so whoever is doing this is like they fasted the whole week. So if he's doing that every week, he's getting a reward for the whole entire year, really. Especially, you know, when you're fasting in Ramadan, and then you fast six more days, in uh, Shabbat, yeah. And then what happens? You got the whole year. So the 
Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is showing another way that you can get the reward for fasting. She said, yeah, he does that. He said, okay, so this, this is what you have. Oh, okay. He said, and as far as the Salah, getting up and worshiping Allah all night, he said, does he go to the masjid for Fajr? Oh, yeah, yeah, he goes every day for Fajr. Does he go to the masjid for Isha? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So whoever goes for Isha to the masjid, he has half of the night in Ibadah, worship to Allah. Half. But whoever goes for Fajr has the other half. Imagine. The problem we have today, we don't realize the value. Because these were people that had a real difficulty getting to the masjid. Not like us. Because keep in mind, those are the two times it's dark. Isn't that right? Isha, it's already dark, right? If you can see anything, that means it's not Isha yet. Right? So, you got to know when it's dark. What about Fajr? If you can see daylight, well, uh, whoops. <laughs> it's not Fajr. So, well, what's the problem of it being dark? Well, one of the things, you can't see where you're going. You could fall down real easy. Another thing, you can't see critters, snakes, scorpions, and they had lots of those back then. But then, they would go and traverse this difficulty so they could get this the law. Today, how easy is it? You got an alarm clock? Don't even need a rooster to listen to it, right? You got an alarm clock. You got it on your phone? Huh? Do you? Okay, set it. And when it goes beep, 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 get up, go to the bus. Say, oh, yeah, well, you know, it's so far. Really? I've only been in Southern California about a year now, but every time I used to come here, people have said what I know today to be, I think, a fact. There's nothing except that it's 20 minutes away from you. Everything here is 20 minutes away. You want to go to work? It's 20 minutes or more, right? You want to go home? I don't care where you are. It's at least 20 minutes away. How do you get there? Do you walk? No. You ride in your car. But at those two times of the day, Isha and Fajr, you don't have that big traffic jam. True or false? So put yourself in a car and go. Now in my case, I have a very beautiful driver for me, and I appreciate that. Alhamdulillah for that. They don't let me drive anymore. They think I'm reckless, but anyway, alhamdulillah. <laughs> I wanted to mention some of these things for a reason, though, because I feel like we're not really getting the benefit. You're coming for Jummah, alhamdulillah. But in reality, and I'm sorry to say it, maybe, we are coming for Juma just because it's a tradition and we're not really thinking about it. Hey, I gotta go to Juma. Yeah, you know, it's an excuse to get out of work. And then I'll go and hang out with my friends and uh, hopefully it won't be in Arabic because I don't understand what's going on in Arabic. Oh, now I'm gonna, we do have some that know a little bit of Arabic over here, but still, the reason you're going is for what? If you said anything other than for the sake of Allah, you're putting a wrong priority on why we're here. <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran what our purpose of life is. And we have no purpose greater than what he said in Surah al dariyah Very clear. Well ma khalaqtu jinn well ins. He did not create jinn and mankind except for ibadah. What is ibadah? Translators say worship. Let me, let me explain something to you about ibadah. Ibadah is a form of voluntary servitude to Allah. You are volunteering. You don't have to do it. <clears throat> Kufar don't do it. True. 75% of the world's population today 
don't even have a clue and don't want to know. But for those of the 25% who are Muslims, we're supposed to understand and know that our ibadah for Allah contains love, surrender, submission, sincerity, obedience, peace, and from that, the, I'm talking about the etymology of the word Aslam, by the way, it also has safety and security, all in this same word. All in the same word. The understanding that we, why do you want to be a Muslim? Because if you don't want to be one, you're not. Huh? If you don't want to be one, it doesn't matter what you're doing, you're not. Because the first rule of ibadah in Islam, it's got to be from your heart that you want to do that. Is that right? So whether we're talking about fasting, coming to the masjid, being here for Juma, the biggest thing is why you're doing it. And if you said, well, I don't want to go to the such and such masjid because not too many people go there. So what was, what was your problem? If you're the only one who shows up, don't you still get a reward for it? And he said, I don't want to go where there's a big, big gathering. I want to know, not me personally, but you should be asking yourself, why do I need to have a big crowd? Because if it's to show off, or I'm trying to promote something, this is not doing it for a long. So bottom line, why do we do what we do? And if it's not for Allah, then what's it for? Because the only thing that doesn't change is Allah. Everything else changes. A brand new car, a brand spanking new car today. What's it worth 20 years from now? You don't even have it anymore. It's already squashed up it's turned into something else. Probably tin cans to put peas and beans in, right? What about a brand new house? Oh man, big, beautiful, nice house, huh? 20 years from now, sewer doesn't work anymore, lighting needs to be updated, uh, oh, they found out asbestos can't go in that, this is happening. All the things that we're talking about in this universe change change. The only thing that doesn't change is our law. So our attitude, our servitude should always be for us. May Allah grant us this sincerity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us on this sirat for mustatim. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who will be able to forsake everything else for the sake of Allah. Amen. And Allah raises up with the people who are of the righteous. Amen. Amen. Forgive us and enter us into his genital for those of Allah with his Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Amen. Allah grant us the khair, the goodness in this life and the goodness in the next life. Amen. And Allah save us from the punishment of the fire. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكنا دار النار. ربنا لا تزكو ربنا بعد إذا ديتنا وهبنا من الدنيا رحمة إنك أنت واحد. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك أنت المجيد. الحمد لله رب العالمين هو الذي جعل المسلمين.